All right, guys, welcome to the I Love Seville show. It's great to be with you on a gorgeous Tuesday across Charlottesville in Central Virginia. Maybe one of the prettiest days of 2019 so far. Just absolutely fantastic outside. It's great to be with you. It's great to connect with you guys through this platform. The I Love Seville show, Monday through Friday, 1230 to 1.30 on the I Love Seville Network. We spotlight the best of Charlottesville, and I think today's program epitomizes that. Laura Van Camp, our guest, she is the entrepreneur and founder behind Gene Theory, a fantastic boutique on Water Street. She is crushing it 10 years in, just celebrated a decade as an entrepreneur. We're so excited to spotlight that anniversary, her journey as a businesswoman, as an entrepreneur, the trials and the tribulations. There are shows like Shark Tank on CNBC that go glorify entrepreneurship, guys. It is no easy journey. We're going to talk about that on the I Love Seville show. Before we welcome Laura Van Camp to the program, let's thank some of the folks that make the program possible. We will give some love to one of our favorite clients, Interstate Pest and Service Companies. We are their proud advertising agency of record. I don't know if you know this, but this company started in 1969 with one man and one truck and a willingness to work hard. Today, it's a four-generation strong company with almost 100 employees in office in Richmond, the headquarters right around the corner from Bodo's Bagels on Harris, an office in the Shenandoah Valley. In 1969, Mr. Wells started the business with one truck and some sweat equity. He would go to his first home and his first customer, service them successfully, and then go to the closest payphone a payphone in 1969 and call his second customer and say, may I come see you now? Now almost 100 employees in a four-generation strong family, locally owned and operated business. We love to champion businesses and success stories like this at I Love Seville. We'll give some love to one of our other favorite clients, Scott Wagner of Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine. Who's got your back? Dr. Wagner's got your back. Physical therapy, sports medicine, chiropractic care. He and his team are changing people's lives in a state-of-the-art practice in the old Quinn Farmer auction house, which he bought. We watched him grow firsthand from one doctor and a couple of people up front to five doctors and an army of chiropractic assistants and associates at Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine. Guys, I have the easy job. All I have to do is be myself and connect with fabulous people like Laura Van Camp, Harris Tolbert, Judah Wickhauer, the team upstairs have the difficult job of keeping us on track. I think we need to go to the studio cam and welcome the intelligent, the effervescent, the gorgeous Laura oh, Van Camp goodness. to the program. You have some things to kind of like rise to oh, right here, really? don't you? You just set the bar really high for me. <laughs> I did My set the goodness. bar here. All and right. I think you're going to surpass and exceed the bar with flying colors. First, we start with what we call as like the birth story or like the flip book of your life before we get into the businesswoman and the entrepreneur who is Laura Van Camp the person passions hobbies and interests all right well so I I grew up in northern Virginia okay Um, I'm gonna go right into this I went to Virginia Tech for college great Um, that's kind of where things kind of formulated for me I guess I got that going from the suburbs of northern Virginia to kind of a small university town, I got that, I kind of got attached to that small town, intimate community, Uh simple way of life, love for the outdoors. Um, So that, you know, later we'll see how that brought me to Charlottesville. But um, also just being in college kind of, uh, there was no Monday through Friday, nine to five. You set your own schedule, you... You know, you kind of pick your classes, you you design your life and how you want it to look. So after that, I decided I wanted to move to the beach. Okay. So I traveled up and down the eastern shore looking for my great beach spot. Didn't find it, so I went to Australia for a couple of months. Okay. Yeah. Um, wow, manifest destiny. Yeah. Australia. Australia. Why Australia? <laughs> Um, Love interest? No. Okay. Uh, Inspiration from someone I met at a bar. Okay. Yep. Uh, Love that. Traveling up and down the East Coast looking for my perfect beach town, I ended up in a bar, met someone who was going to Australia. I said, that sounds good. I'm tired of looking for this, like, place to land, corporate job maybe that's not going to work out for me right now. Respect. travel. Respect. So I was there for, like, two or three months. Okay. Um, while I was there, I got an email from, uh, another, an old bartender I used to know who was 
going out to Colorado to run a bar, and I was like, I'll do that for a little while. So I lived in Keystone, Colorado for six months, um, bartended and skied out there, uh, and then decided, oh, and then I moved to South Carolina. So I, I got my place at the beach for two years. Um, the beach is really transient. It was fun. Uh -huh. I was in sales. It, I got my fill. I wanted to live by the ocean. I wanted to see the sunrise out of the water in the morning. I did that, and then it was time to just kind of... My, my, my childhood best friend's dad just kind of looked at me at her wedding, and he was like, you, you think you might park it for a little bit? And I was like, all right, well, where do, we, where do I want to ultimately be? And then I thought back to my time at Virginia Tech and that, like, the small town, the kind of create your own, your own life. And okay. I was like, you know, I really want to be a business owner, and I want to live somewhere that has that small town feel but with the big city resources. And I asked everybody I knew, like, where do you love? Where's, like, this town? I knew I wanted to be closer to my family in northern Virginia, um, so anyone from like my financial advisor to my pot smoking hippie friends Love were that. like, <laughs> Charlottesville's the most amazing place. Amen. And I thought if there's that kind of diversity there, that's where I want to be. I love that answer. Thanks. Cause it's the truth. Okay. Now in <laughs> Charlottesville. <laughs> yes. And when you're in Charlottesville, as soon as you arrive, did you find it to be inclusive and approachable and welcoming? And the reason I ask this question, I've been here 19 years, and I've always found it to be welcoming and approachable and inclusive, but I have many, 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 many friends who have said, initially, we found some of the folks standoffish because they've been so tight and had known each other for so long that they had already built their bonds and their networks and their friendships. Right. Throw that to you. My experience is the exact same as yours. Yeah. I have heard that it's not inclusive, it's very closed off, and that just, I can't relate to it. It wasn't my experience at all. Yeah? Not at all. So as soon as you got here, you felt like home? I, it did. It did. Um... I was also very focused on okay. one thing. As soon as I, I mean, I moved here to open gene theory. Nice. So the second I got here, I was 60, 80 hours a week building out a store. And, um, and I just, even my family who was here helping me was so complimentary on Charlottesville and how neighborly everybody was. I mean, people were stopping by to say hi and hey, if you need a ladder, or, you know, I mean, I just felt extremely welcome and included, and people were willing to help, and I had just moved here. I love it. I love it. Let's thank some of the folks that are watching. Um, you're getting some props already. Really? Um, you're getting props from Andy Pally. Andy in uh, Rodenth, North Carolina, is watching. He says, I love the show. Um, you're getting some love on your page from Rory Reynolds. <laughs> great job, Laura. Keep knocking them out of the park. Great business with a great owner. I think Rory is in Atlanta, Georgia right now. So we have folks watching in uh, North Carolina in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we'll thank some of the folks that are watching on the Gene Theory page. Kevin Decker says hello. Hey, Kevin. Uh, Jeremy Stanwick in D.C. says hello. On my page, a lot of people jump in. Michael Mallory, Sonia Dean, Hunter Blackwell, Rod Brunel, Ray, Ray Cadell, Jed Bowden, Steve Rappaport of NBC29, Bellamy Brown, Andre Xavier, Lauren Linsky, the list goes on. Wow. Give it a like. Give it a share on any of the streams that you guys are watching. Turn the first answer into a sizzle reel, and we're about to create another sizzle reel here. Um, I would like for you to throw this answer to the audience. Gene theory. Who, what, when, where, and why. The show is yours. Gene theory. Who, what, when, where, and why. Um... What do you mean? Talk to us about the business, the oh. evolution. You started it. I Tell gotcha. us why the idea. Why the idea? The, well, my personal um, never-ending hunt for the perfect pair of jeans uh, was the why. Um, and to this day, like I've, I'm not incredibly sure if 
like this was really w what I wanted to do for the rest of my life or if I just felt like this needed to exist. Um, I needed a place to find the perfect pair of jeans. I needed a place to take the jeans um, that I didn't love somewhere. Um, I needed just that store that would fill that need of what I wanted to wear. Okay. Um, so that's why I created it. Um, and I figured everybody else needed that too. And when you started the business, were you um, absolutely, did you pivot the model? Did you keep the model going? Did you consider uh, marketplace feedback? I mean, what was the initial response in like year one to when you launched, launched Gene Theory? So Gene Theory has changed. Our, our concept and branding has actually changed a lot um, over the 10 years. It, originally, we were, um, the store was half new, half used uh, for both jeans and clothing. So I very much kept an eye on what has worked, what hasn't worked, and has it's evolved from there. Um, really, it was when we moved, I've moved four times. It was really when we moved into our current location on Water Street that we finally kind of got it. Like, who our customers were what they were looking for. Um, How about the moves? Put the moves in perspective. Uh, first, second, third, and fourth. So first we were on 4th Street, okay. next to the cigar shop. Yep, um, remember that. And I was going to a movie with some girlfriends and walked by uh, a place on the, on the mall front that was vacant and just got really excited about being on the mall, a bigger store, it was twice the size of what I had, which this is one of my biggest mistakes, which, you know, maybe not, but everything, it got me to where I am now, but thinking that I needed more space, um, and I, I really didn't. I ended up in a space that was twice the size of my first space, and now our final place on Water Street is half the size of my first space, so. You're getting some props Didn't right now. Elaine that. Yeager says, you're amazing, Laura. Hi, Elaine, thank you. Do you, do you consider yourself um, kind of like an entrepreneurial like inspiration for folks? I mean, you're 10 years in. You're, you're in a very competitive category in fashion. Um, you're a very competitive category in downtown. There are a lot of boutiques downtown. Um, Put in perspective of how you look at yourself as a businesswoman influencing others in the marketplace. Because 10 years is, is a reason to celebrate. Thanks for saying that. I, you know, I don't, I don't think much about it. I just, I get up, I do my thing, I do the best I can every day. I am told from friends and family that I don't give myself enough credit. Um, I just... I don't know. Why do you think that is? Are you a perfectionist? Are you thought you so hard on yourself? Yeah? Talk That's to us about I, that. About being a perfectionist? Yeah. Yeah, it's an ongoing challenge, uh, for sure. Um, to and Mike Mallory, who signed in and, and said hi, would would agree. He really encourages me to to, you know not be so hard on myself and but there's a balance right so you need to not be so hard on yourself but then how do you also keep pushing yourself forward it's a delicate balance that you kind of have to like wake up and and find your line every day so when you launched the business and you said you were filling kind of like a need or a niche for yourself yes and you were like this is something i feel like i personally need <laughs> right. and if i need it then there's got to be others that needed as well. Sure. I feel like that's how I started my business with VMB Brands, the yeah. advertising agency. I was like so 11 years ago into social media, and I was noticing that there was other advertising agencies in the market that were more focused on print, radio, and television. And I'm like, if I go balls to the wall in social media and like build this business focused on this. I think we can fill a need because I think this is where like the market's going. And prove to be right. Um, you proved to be right as well. Um, here's where I'm going with this question. If you could do it all over again, what would you change? What would you keep the same with gene theory? If you, Laura, today had all the experience and knowledge that you do, but could take a DeLorean like in Back to the Future, 
right. Michael J. Fox style, and go 10 years back, what would you do differently? What would I do differently? Um, I wish that I could have started with the concept and the branding that gene theory is now. I feel like it took me a really long time to kind of learn the ropes of what works and what doesn't work. Um, and like I said, really moving into our, that, the store where we are now on Water Street is where we like really developed our brand and kind of our niche and what we carry and who we cater to. Um, and I think that if I had been able to start that way, I would be so much farther ahead. Do you, or do you fancy yourself, um, do you see yourself as a designer? Do you see yourself as a businesswoman? Do you see yourself as a, a risk taker? Um, because here's where I'm going with this. Your branding is like awesome. And like we specialize in branding, we're an advertising agency. It's so clean, it's so like forward, it's so like, um, it's like something I would wanna wear. You know, it's something that I would, I would want to like embody <laughs> and like nice. get behind. Yeah. <laughs> like I love the branding. Talk to us about like your skill set in running a business and what you think you're best at. Mm. So this is also something that is super challenging is that I wear about 8 million hats. Okay. Um, and I know you probably know I this. I do. A, yeah. Right? I took so... the trash out <laughs> this morning and was vacuuming the floors yesterday. It's got to get done. Yeah. Um, and so something that I struggle with is that I don't necessarily feel like I am a rock star at any of it. I'm just kind of good at a few different things. Oh, that, that's not true. Oh, well, you know. Um, I feel like you're being too hard on yourself now. Well, that's our theme, apparently. Um, so what, what did you ask? Am I a risk taker? Of course. Like, you can't... I don't think you can go into business for yourself and by yourself without being a risk taker. Um, what am I really good at? I, I think that I feel passionate about creating, not necessarily about design, um, but passionate about creating. And I, I mean, I love anything from sitting at my desk and doing the number crunching and the bookkeeping to coming up with big advertising campaigns. Like, and I think that's one of the things that really drew me to not only being an entrepreneur, but also this type of industry is that I get to do a lot of different things. And there is something that's um, really analytical about it. And there's something that's really creative about it. Um, you have really built, I feel like, a community and like a tribe. Um, and I have a lot of friends that when I mentioned to them that you were coming on the show, were like super stoked um, because they'd That's come and they'd shop at your store. And another aspect that I think that really is like fantastic of what you've done is like a lot of times you're there. So like you're interacting with the people and the ladies coming into the store. Right. Talk to us about like the tribe and like the brand culture that is gene theory. One of my favorite things is really getting to know the different customers. And it, there's something very intimate about um, jeans and your body and dressing rooms. And it's just, I feel like you really get to know, you really get to know people on an intimate level. Um, what's important to them, what they're afraid of, what their hangups with themselves are. Um, and I think that we've, I think we've, and I say we, my team, and I have done a really good job of creating this safe, intimate space that isn't, um, hopefully isn't intimidating to It's people. approachable. That it's like non-judgmental. -jud and it's hard, like a, uh, a high-end boutique that is very small and very intimate um, to, to also be approachable, I think, is, is something that we really strive for. Because jeans are like, jeans like seem like straightforward, but they're no easy task. Everybody has a different body type. Everybody has like a different shade of denim, denim they like. 
Um, everybody has like a different gene, I almost feel like, for their given mood of that day. Right. Or what they want to do on that day. Sure. Or who they want to be seen by in that day. Yes. Um, so it's like, all right, I have a pair of jeans for like chilling around the house. Yeah. Um, and it's probably like the pair of jeans that I've had like for 10 years. Right. They're just comfortable. They feel like it's like a kid with a blanket that he carries around the Your home. security blanket. Your security blanket. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And then you have those pair of jeans that are like maybe just a little bit too tight, but you know you look good in them once you get in them. Right. And, then and you have you're to like, be in the right mood. You have to be in the right mood because right. you got to have the confidence right. to pull them off. And then you're going out that night. But you have to make sure you're only going to go out for a couple hours and not drink too much because then you'll get bloated. Like the, the jeans that are a little too small are tricky. Right. But you're right. You wouldn't believe how, well, you would believe, but there's nothing straightforward about this stitched cotton. You would think it would be straightforward. Talk to us about very that. Very complicated. The personality <laughs> of a pair of jeans. The personality of a pair of jeans. I mean, you've got your... I'm going to brunch with my grandmother jeans. Um, you've got your, I'm going on a date with someone I just met versus I'm going on a date with my husband jeans. Like right. they're, they're very, 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 very different. Um, yeah, I, I think there's that's a gene for every, every occasion, mood, company. Um, you're getting props. Dakota Wolf, you're absolutely fantastic, Laura. Thank you, Jeff. Um, is it Ken Burchinski? Yeah, hey, Ken. Hi, Laura. Congratulations on your success. Um, give the show a like and a share, and if you'd like to relay any messages to Laura, I'm happy to do it. Just put it in the comment box on any of the channels that you're watching. We'll welcome Dave Warwick, the brewmaster at Three Notch, to the show. Colleen Tyler's watching. Amy Hutchinson-Williams. Aaron Hill. Um, James Watson, Sonia Marshall Dean, Bobby Castine, Aaron, a, a lot of folks watching right now. Thanks give so it a like, give it a share. Um, how about the evolution from, and we've touched on this a little bit, your shops? Because you've had bigger footprints. A good example would be like when you had the shop on the mall, right on the mall proper, it was a bigger footprint. Was There's a, a restaurant there now. Right. Is it Brazier? Yeah. Saison? Yes. Okay. That's where I first met you. So the girl that I was dating at the time needed a pair of jeans. We went in there. You were fabulous. Thank you. You, like, totally, like, won her over and charmed her. I was, like, the typical guy that was, like, sitting, like, on, like, a chair watching <laughs> her try on jeans. And then you made her feel, like, so comfortable and so, like, secure. And she's, she's beautiful, okay? And so, like, secure in her skin and so, like, um, self-confident. And, like, she tried on, you know, probably 10 pair and then finally selected one uh, and walked out and wore them that night when we were going out to a party, had the best time. And that's when I was, like, it's, like, the jeans from your store added to her sense of self-confidence that evening. And with that self-confidence that evening, it took her and the night for us together to a different level of enjoyment. Because there's something to be said about um, a human, and it's not just females, but just humans in general, that feel good about themselves. Yep. And when you're feeling good about yourself, then you're able to like, consider and take in all these other emotions because you're not dealing with the sense of insecurity at the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm very impressed to hear you say this. You and would not believe like what a great fitting pair of jeans can do. And I'm, I'm I saw actually, it. I'm really like you. You saw the whole process. I did. You saw from like walking in the store to what happened during the evening that she was wearing them. That's I, huge. I totally did. And and no bullshit. Like undoubtedly attributed to the experience she had in jean theory. And it was like her first pair of like uh, like step up jeans, if you may. Mm -hmm. You know, like not off the rack at a department right. store that weren't like custom in a lot of ways for her. Right. And it was like one where she like almost like treasured. And probably not. She probably left with something that she didn't even like go in looking for. Uh, those those are my favorites. Yeah. Those are my favorite customers. How does that make you feel? And put that journey into you know into perspective of when someone's coming in and maybe they're used to like like Levi's. Right. And they're coming into your store and falling in love with the brand and realize what, like, a true pair of denim is about. It's definitely a journey. I mean, that's usually a, 
it's not something that happens instantaneously. There's, there's baby steps to this. So you start by giving them exactly what they asked for and what they think they want. And as, as we get to know them, because we start talking about like, hey, you know, what are you up to tonight? Or what are you, you know, what are your hobbies? Do you have kids at home? Like it all plays into what it is that you're wanting out of a pair of jeans. And it's always a feeling. Nobody's ever looking for dark wash. Nobody's ever really looking for skinny jeans. You're looking for a feeling. You want to feel sexy. You want to feel confident. You want to feel uh, bold, professional. It's, it's, more than, it's more than cotton. It's more than a wash. It's more than high rise. There's, there's always an emotional reason behind it. Um, and it's so beautiful to watch. Uh, someone going from having no idea what they want or thinking they know what they want to walking out in something that they never thought they would have purchased, but you know it just changed their life. And I know that's a really bold statement to make about stitched cotton, but you, I mean, you've seen it. You witnessed it. I don't think it's a bold statement at all. Turn that answer into sizzle reel, please. Start with my uh, commentary all the way through that. A sizzle reel is like a highlight clip from the show, oh. and I think that was a highlight clip, and I'm certainly seeing it by the folks that are watching. Aaron Hill says, Laura is an amazing and determined businesswoman. We love her at the terraces. Um, Jane Martin, go Laura. You are a superwoman. Uh, Doug, who's watching at NBC 29, Doug Robert Niven, the best thing to happen in the jean world, two words, flex jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate the flex jeans as well. Uh, Denise Postawhite is watching at um, Kilwins right now, uh, I think maybe on her lunch break. Virginia Carroll, welcome to the show. If you'd like to relay a message to Laura, I'm happy to do it. Just put it in the chat box on any of the channels that you're watching. When you initially 10 years ago, and I'm so impressed, 10 years in. When it's you, like I hear it. When you say it, I hear it. Doesn't it, it make it like so like tangible and real and like baller? Yeah. Right? Yep. Like when, like when we were 11, so we're 11 years, like I said. When we were 11 years, I'm like, yeah, we're 11 years. And then I heard someone say to me like, Jerry, you've been doing this for 11 fucking years. I know. I'm like, that's right. I have been doing this for 11 years. You know? Yep. It's like, yeah. You know, I... You know, when you get to that point, you're like, this is a freaking business, right? Yeah. Um, so this Yeah, is what, it's for real. Like, we're not playing around anymore. Right. Once you're, like, out of, like, that first three years, 80% of small businesses fail in their first three years. Think about that number, guys. It might even be 85% of small businesses fail in their first three years. So her being 10 years in is a cause to champion. When you started the business 10 years ago and you said, I was going to build a business where, the, where it was going to be called Gene Theory. Right. What were people telling you? Did you get a lot of your crazies? I, I did, especially that was economic downturn during that time. Right. So that's like 2008, right. 2009. Yeah, exactly. That's when I did it. Yep. My friends, had, my friends and my parents had an intervention for me and begged me not to live, leave my career at the time. I was doing extremely well. Okay, extremely well. They're like, don't leave. Don't do this. This is dumb. Right. Took $32,000 at the time, which was all my money my life savings, put it into the business, didn't have a single client for seven months, mm -hmm. was going to the Panda Garden Buffet on Emmett Street by Lambeth, which mm -hmm. is now not there, and eating the lunch buffet for five ninety five, dollars bringing Ziploc bags when the ladies weren't looking, was taking food off my plate and putting it into Ziploc bags for food for me and my dog for two or three days. That's how tough it got. But then, like you, made one customer happy, they told another customer, that second customer told two other customers, and it just snowballed. Right. Throw it to you, the first year. What'd you go through? Give us the nitty gritty. Oh boy, all right, here we go. So I signed the lease on the store before I signed a lease on a place to live. Get out. I moved, yep. So pimp. Yeah. yeah. I'm like you, when I decide I'm gonna do something. You just go. I just, you, Thousand miles yep. an hour. Let's do it. Um, I I probably moved personally six times in the first year. Uh, I would on my way to on my way to the store. I would buy a can of beans, a can of corn, 
usually a tomato, and if I was feeling generous with myself, an avocado. That was my lunch. I had a couple of times where I was between places to live. I just, I couldn't find my right place to live, so I never signed a lease. I was kind of like jumping around. I had an air mattress in the back of the store. I was staying in this one place that was like, it was a basement apartment, it was kind of moldy. So I would sleep in the store, and then I would jog to the house, shower, come back to the store. That's awesome. I don't know. I'm sure I wasn't allowed to sleep in the store, so. No one knew. Yeah. Don't ask, don't tell. Okay, right. It's been 10 years, right? So. Right. <laughs> um, I had to go to New York on buying trips, uh, and a friend of mine owned the Starlight Express at the time. Yeah. So he would let me jump on the bus for free. Was that Oliver? Yeah. Okay. So that was a, was it $10 bus ride to New York? It was, it was a cheap bus ride. I didn't pay. From Charlottesville to New York. Okay. So you took the Starlight Express yes. for buying trips to the Big Apple. Yes. God, I love this story. Please keep going. Um, I would close, what would I, I would close on maybe a Saturday night. I would get on Priceline right before I got on the bus. So the last possible second, hoping to get the best deal on a hotel, right? So right before I would get on the bus, I would get on Priceline, um, get my hotel for the night. I would take the bus up to New York. I would get there at midnight Saturday night, um, go to my hotel, be at market all day Sunday, get back on the bus, get home midnight Sunday night. So the store was only closed on Sunday. Um, and now it's like a three-day trip, you know, and I take... Um, I now you enjoy it. it. Yeah. Now it's actually fun and I'm not like trying to sleep on the bus and yeah. So that, those are my big things for, for the first year. The overnight, one, one night trips to New York and eating beans and corn and sleeping in the store. When you were sleeping on an air mattress in the back of Gene Theory in year one, did you have some dark times? There were a few times where, yeah, there were some dark times. It wasn't like, what have I done? Mm -hmm. But it was, I was just very, I was tired. Um, adrenaline kept me going, but I just, there were some days that I was just a little worn out. Yeah? Yeah. And how did that um, inspire you? Did it motivate you? Sure. Definitely wanted to keep going and... and get it. Get it. Yeah. And not be there anymore not be in that position anymore. Did you get tired of eating beans? Yes. Do you, do you eat beans now? <laughs> Taking a break. Taking a break from beans? God, <laughs> this story is so good. I mean, it's so effing good. I love hearing these stories. It's, it's real. I mean, that's... For a long time, I wanted to give this image that, like, no, it's all great. Of but, course. Like, but that, that's, that's what it was. I mean, and that's real. And to not... To not be speaking that truth or to be, you know. Is, not, is doing, I feel the same way. And like, it took me forever to tell that story of going to the Panic Garden Buffet and stealing food or like lifting up seat cushions at my buddy's places to look and for finding change. a dollar three and change for <laughs> yeah. a double cheeseburger for McDonald's. But now, like, I see it as like a badge of honor. And like, um, I love to tell the story because everybody has this like misconception of being a business owner, of being like, almost because of Shark Tank and these shows being rock stars. Right. It freaking is not. It's not like that. Right. Talk to me about day to day and how it's not for you. Uh, how it's not. Like this rock star lifestyle. Oh, no, I'm constantly, like I've, I mentioned earlier, wearing a ton of different hats, which makes time management kind of challenging. You know, I really have to sit down and um, Sunday nights and kind of block out my week and make sure that I'm not W wasting time kind of transitioning uh -huh. from, you know, one hat to the next. Um, so that's, like, that's definitely a big challenge. People, I mean, the store is beautiful. It's really well put together. Um, everybody on my team does such an amazing job. Uh, but you really don't see what goes on behind the scenes and when the computer malfunctions and... You know, I just, there are, 
there are days that are really smooth and easy and days that there are a lot of fires that need to be, be put out. That's how um, I feel. I feel like yeah. that's a sizzle reel. Can you start with her journey in year one all the way through that point? Um, Cause I thought that was so motivating. Um, Travis Elliott's watching, uh, Tara Mago is watching, Ann Croft, Kim Caesar is watching, Kim Clement Caesar, they're all giving you props right now. Aww, Give the show a like and a share. Sandy Fuel, welcome to the program. Viola Starks, welcome to the show. Um, give it a like. If you have a message like Grace Mejia that you'd like to relay to um, Laura, I'm happy to do it. Just type it. James Stockton, the new owner of Michael's Bistro, is watching right now. Congratulations, James. Um, let me throw this to you. How did Charlottesville in the first year respond to gene theory? Amazing. Yeah? I mean, yeah, I got so much positive feedback, um, which was great. There was actually a denim store that existed when, when I opened. Uh -huh. um, one of the reasons people told me this isn't a good time with this economy. It's a small town. We already have a denim store. And I was kind of like, I want to live in Charlottesville, and I want to open a store, and I want it to be about jeans. And I kind of just didn't listen, you know? Um, but people were very receptive and very excited um, about the store, even though something similar already existed, which was, which was nice. Was your customer base um, UVA students? Was it Charlotte Villians? Was it like, what was the demographic or, and how, how has it evolved? First, what was the, uh, the customer demographic when you opened? Mm -hmm. And how has it matured or evolved as you have as a businesswoman? A lot of people are really surprised to hear that um, we're not college. Mm -hmm. We're not, it's not about UVA. Um, and this is mostly people who don't live in Charlottesville are surprised that, you know, they always think, um, oh, jeans, UVA, this is perfect. And, you know, UVA is maybe like 10, 15% of our clientele. Um, most of our customers are young professionals, um, young moms. Um, and that, I feel like that has stayed pretty consistent. Maybe we had a little bit, when we first opened, um, a little bit younger target audience. But I also realized that I was also younger. Sure. Right? So right. I feel Just like... Just like our business. So I don't know, like, I need to start looking at this. Like, is my, is my business and my brand going to evolve and age with me? I think so, or does right? It, does, do I, at some point, I feel like I need to be careful to kind of, like, keep it... Fresh? Keep it fresh and keep it... But you have. For what it is. Because right? you're a trendsetter. I feel like you are on, like, the the like a pioneer or an innovator or on like the cutting edge of like fresh and like design and what's trending or what's about to pop. And like people like rely on you for that because that's a skill. That's what people are coming in here for the ad agency. I mean, we're right. the first people doing, we are the first business in the entire Commonwealth of Virginia that is doing a live daily talk show streaming on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And people are like, because of that like innovation, Q1 was our best quarter we've had in 11 years. Nice, congratulations. And it's attributed to doing innovations like stuff like this. Right. So where I'm throwing is like, they rely on that with you. And don't you feel like that is one of your skills where you're like able to see like, this is, tr this is what's coming down the pipe. Talk to me about that. We, uh, and don't spend, be modest. Yeah. Don't okay. be modest. So I have a... Um, I have a Maddie. I have Maddie Zirkel is my, she's been with me for seven years. Okay. Um, and she is all over the new brands. What's like, she's got this. Yeah. Um, and she has brought in a bunch of great lines lately that our customers have been super excited about. And, you know, it's, we go to market a few times a year. We see what everybody's doing to see what's trending, and then we go back to who we think did it best, and that's what we bring in. I love it. I love it. You're getting props right now. Let's uh, relay. Guys, give some props to Laura. Um, Stacy, is it uh, Stacy Moran? 
Yes. Stacy Moran, the only place I buy my jeans is Jean Theory. Thank you, Stacy. I love Stacey. the jeans, I love the owner, and I love Aww. the staff. Maddie Zirkel is watching right now. Uh, cry face emoji, cry face emoji, cry face emoji. Three <laughs> hearts, three hearts, three hearts, three hearts. Uh, Maddie's loving, loving that. Maddie Zirkel, props to you. Uh, on the show. Let me throw uh, how Charlottesville has changed, mm -hmm. how the downtown has changed. Um, you've been in business 10 years. Downtown Mall is so different now than it was 10 years ago. It does feel different. And we've, I feel like we've, we've moved around with it too. I mean, we've been on, on different streets, on different, have, we've had different neighbors. It's, it's, been, it's been really transient. Um, businesses come and go and Definitely. Does it terrify you at all the the what's happening online with online shopping? No. That doesn't? No. Nope. Talk to me about that. I think that as online shopping uh, trends, I think I see more and more stores closing. Um, and I firmly believe that they're, especially with jeans, right? Everybody says, no, you have to try jeans on. I don't want to buy a ton and have them in my dressing room and try to figure out, like, people want to make sure their jeans fit properly. Um, and so they come to us because we understand how they're supposed to fit. We understand, um, we take the guesswork out of shopping for them. We understand how they're supposed to fit and we can advise on how the jeans are going to behave over time. Um, what, so do you mean, what do you mean by that? Shrink? Wear? Break in. Um, how to wear them, how you're going to style them for different events, uh, different, you know, different uses. Um, but also I think that as these big box stores and smaller boutiques close, there's still going to be a need. So I... I think we're just going to have a bigger percentage of the market share. So no, it doesn't bother that. me at all. I love the forward thinking. Bring it on. The vision. You, you say bring it on. Bring it on. You have uh, done a phenomenal job on social. Yes. I follow it closely. Thank you. It's because it's our business. Right. And I like to watch and learn from the businesses that are like stellar and kick ass in the market. Gene Theory does. IG, Facebook, social across the board. Talk to me about the social and digital strategy for uh, Gene Theory. We're working on this. Yeah. I, I appreciate you saying that we do it well. Uh -huh. I, you don't think so? Here we go. I think we do a great job. Okay. Um, I think we can do so much more. So this is the balance, right, of being the perfectionist, but also you got to keep moving forward. Because at the point where I say, okay, that's good enough, like where does the business go where does my life go when I've decided that, that that's good enough? And that's, that's not who I am. Is it ever going to be good enough? No. Right. Thank goodness. It's you, but oh, let me throw this to you. I struggle with this so this much. This is how we grow. I know. I struggle with this so much. Like, I like, so this business is 11 years old. I look at this as like it's like my 11-year-old child. Okay. You probably look at Gene Theory. It's like it's your 10-year-old kid, right? Sure. So... I, even when I leave these walls or upstairs mm -hmm. and head home or I'm drinking a beer on the mall or like I'm at dinner, I cannot stop thinking about what's going on here. Right. And I cannot, I'm also a perfectionist. I'm like my own worst critic. Um, it's never going to be enough. That, that cliche, stop and smell the roses, mm -hmm. F that. <laughs> you know, I'm never going to stop and smell the roses. Like I've taken one vacation in 11 years one vacation in 11 years. And it's built success, own large chunk of this building sure. downtown, but it's also built some regret of like 11 years of my life, 70 to 80 hours a week grinding here. Okay, well I think there's something to be said for balance. Okay, you so have balance? I, I, I actually do. Okay. I, I feel like I have some balance right now. Um, so, I'm talking about not settling. Okay. I wouldn't say this is where we need to be. This is good enough. Let's not look at growth. Let's not expand. But I think that in order to do that, you also have to personally have balance in your life. You've got to rest. You have to recharge. You have to... I mean, there have been times when 
I've gone through some dark phases with the store where I, I didn't, I wasn't in love with it anymore. And I think it was How because, come? um, I wasn't in love with myself anymore. I was consumed by it. I was tired of it. So it's important to have hobbies. It's important to travel. It's important to get eight or, you know, 10 hours of sleep every night. It, balance, it's important. How do you recharge? Um, I need to spend a lot of time alone. I need good So you're an introvert? I am very much an introvert. Really? Yeah. I would not have guessed that. I know. That. So uh, being an introvert is about where you gain your energy. It's not about being outgoing. It's not about being... I can be outgoing. I can be social. But I very rarely gain energy from other people. I need to go... Respect. I need to go take a bubble bath and write in my journal. Um... I can get a certain type of person might energize me or I might get inspiration from them. Uh -huh. um, but it's very rare that no matter what, I will always have to go recharge um, solo. Um, Neil Williamson, welcome to the program. He just liked the show. We'll thank some of the folks that are liking and sharing right now. Is it Michelle Gibbony? Yes. Um, hey. Heather Hightower, hey. welcome to the program. Give it a like, give it a share. If you have a message, we're happy to relay it to uh, Laura Van Camp. Hannah Mills, you did, who had a store in the downtown mall, yeah, a toy store. She's she watching right now. She's fantastic. Uh, Lauren Linsky, hello. Um, give it a like, give it a share. And if you have a message, we'll relay it to Laura Van Camp. You said you had some dark, I want to follow up on this. You said you had some dark, dark times, times when it was like, this was deep, when it was tied to the store because you weren't in love with the store at that point. And that impacted you personally. How do you get out of those dark times? I think it's the other way around. Okay. I think that, I think that if I really look at it, I wasn't in love with myself and, and what my life was like and what I was doing. And so I resented the store for that. Um, I was, Working too much, I like we we just talked about things were just out of balance. Um, I love that I love that what I've created allows me to do a variety of different things. Um, but I also need I need that time to have friends and have hobbies, and I need a lot of time outside. Um, I need a lot of physical activity. Heather Hightower says, Laura Van Camp does a great job of taking chances. Mm. Um, taking chances and strategic calculated risk are think, I think are what separates the successful entrepreneurs from the entrepreneurs that are, lack of a better phrase, mediocre mm -hmm. or going out of business. Right. Talk to us about what Heather Hightower just said about Laura Van Camp does a great job of taking chances. Taking I, I think it comes down to the calculated risk. Um, and I'm, I, I feel it in, in my gut. It becomes a gut thing for me. Like I can sit and make my pro con list, but even when I do that, like I, I've already got the answer before that happens. Right, don't, I'm either, the same way. Yeah, like, like people can say, don't do this, but it's like, I'm like doing the pro con list like you. Yeah. Or like, should I do this? And like my instinct, and I trust my instinct, like my instinct is like rarely wrong. It's hardly ever that my pro con, my pro con list. It's always the opposite of the instinct, right? Uh, not necessarily for me. Okay. But I think my pro con list ends up solidifying what my instinct, my instinct said. So it's kind of like, okay, I have the proof written out on paper. I can now see this. And I mean, it's, ends up being kind of an unnecessary exercise, but at least I got it down on paper. When did you start trusting the instinct and like yourself and that like inner voice 100% of the time? It took me a while to get to that point. Don't. I wish I was there. Okay. I'm about 90% of the time. Um, but it, it's... 90% is good. Yeah. It's, That's more than most people. It's developed really, really nicely over the past 10 years. And I, I think it's just 
come from being self-aware and I mean I'm constantly questioning my motives you know looking at the bigger picture and my reason behind doing something and I think it's just kind of been on my journey of getting to know myself um, that's made me kind of get to that point. You're crushing this show. You're crushing, crushing the show. We're 55 minutes in. No, yeah, really? 55 oh, minutes in. I'm way out of my element, so that's nice to hear. <laughs> Effing crushing this show here. Um, I have a couple more questions. Harris Tolber, we're going to work our director into the mix here in a matter of moments. He's got some questions. Sure. Um, how about this question? This is kind of a macro question. Great. Um, the evolution of style and dress for people, like especially in a community like Charlottesville, it's not, is it gotten, it's gotten more casual, like business casual and casual is more approachable, is more welcome and mm -hmm. acceptable. Mm -hmm. Like a good example is here in our store. I wear rainbow sandals every single day. You know, when you walked into the store, I walked into our office, I was wearing a tank top. You were. Okay. I put this shirt on because of the show, but I wanted to be comfortable. Like, and our clients know us and the team and mm -hmm. the folks that work on the team, like this is who they are. And like, you know, talk to us about how like business casual and like the mindset of like three piece suits or like the women's professional suit right. has changed and evolved and how it's like catered to what you're doing. Uh, yeah, I, you couldn't catch me in a suit. Um, right. right. Me either. I, <laughs> Ever. A funeral or a wedding. Yeah. Only time for me. I am. Um, I'm jeans and a black tank top and I'm really, every once in a while I'll try to branch out and, oh, we, we have such great stuff in right now. I, I'm, I'm going to be wearing jeans and a black tank top for the rest of my life. Um, but to actually, to answer your question, I think that, uh, I think jeans, I mean, with athleisure, what's going on with athleisure right now, I think that, You're talking like Lululemon? Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever kind of, like, I'm going... Like Under Armour's doing this. And I'm going to the gym or coming from the gym or whatever. I think that that's made a place for jeans in the workplace. And now business casual is... Can be jeans and a blouse or a blazer or... I totally agree with that. Yeah. Put that more into perspective. So you're basically saying like the ubiquitous nature of yoga pants all over the community has made um, a great pair of jeans a step up, which Definitely. has made them um, socially and professionally acceptable in a business side. Definitely. Jeans are every day. Life happens in jeans. Why are you a black tank top and jeans every day? I don't know. I feel it in my gut. That's what I want to wear. Yeah. I'm not going to question it anymore. That's, I have a good day when I'm in jeans and a black tank top. I feel black's my color. I feel powerful. I feel like I can conquer my day. I don't have to think about matching anything. Black. I love it. Yep. I feel the same way with rainbow sandals. Harris, nice. I'm about to get you in the mix. Chelsea Ketron is watching in Richmond. Chrissy Benninger, the owner of Bluegrass Grill is giving you some props right now on the I Love Seville show. Give it a like, give it a share on any of the streams that you are watching. Thank you, Chrissy, for doing so. Um, Harris Tolber, let's get you in the mix, sir. Yeah, so, you know, I know firsthand how, how important the right pair of <laughs> uh, jeans is, is when, when you find it. So it was New Year's Day, and I was driving up to D.C. to go out with my best friend, and I had on my blanket pair, you know, the, the ones that I've had for 10 years. The security blanket <laughs> the pair. The security jeans. ones, yeah. And I'm like... You know, I, I'm not going out on New Year's in my in my blanket pair of uh, <laughs> jeans. So I stop by Fashion Square and buy this, like, perfect fitting pair of jeans. Get up to my friend's place in D.C. He's like, uh, try on the jeans. Let me see how they, they fit. Turns out they still have, like, the little, uh, what's it called, Laura? The, um, the security? The security thing on it. Yeah, the tag. Oh, no. So he's like, Man. dude, you have to go on YouTube. Like, look up videos on how to get, get this, this thing off. off. <laughs> Next thing you know, we have like a, a lighter and we're like trying to like <laughs> burn it off um, <laughs> and couldn't get it off. He's like, dude, you still have to wear those. So he's, he's like, the security tag is close enough to the bottom where you can roll it up and nurse it. Like, just make sure that no one sees it. So I roll it up and I'm like nursing it all night. It worked out. Um, but yeah, I know firsthand. And um, the other thing, Laura, is I love when you were talking about um, 
introvert. Rejection. I knew you were going there. Yes. Are you an introvert? <laughs> I could relate to that to a T because it's a common misconception. People think that yes. introverts can't like go out and have a good time. But really it's more about like where we recharge. Like for me, it's when I get home, I take a shower. I just kind of like chill in my room by myself. Like yep. that's, that's when I recharge. So I love that. I and yeah, it's that. been a great interview. Um, I loved having you on the show. Thanks so much. Harris, that was amazing. <laughs> Seriously, your best commentary yet. That was on point. I love how you made that first hand right there. Um, I've thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly have enjoyed this, this interview. And I appreciate the like, uh, openness and your willingness to get vulnerable and sure. talk about like, uh, the tough times and the great times. Yep. Um, I want to create one more highlight reel okay. um, for the show. And I'm going to ask you this question. What can we expect? What makes Gene Theory great? That's the first part of the question. Okay. And then what can we expect from Gene Theory moving forward as you head into the next 10 years of the brand? Right. So here's the sizzle reel. What makes Gene Theory great today? Mm -hmm. And what can we expect from Gene Theory over the next 10 years to continue that greatness? Well, um, I mean, Gene Theory is great today because of the team we've built, the brand we've built, the, our client base, um, and how I, I think how we all work together. Um, it, really is, it really is a very dynamic store where our customers have shaped what we are today by who they are, what they want, um, and what they're willing to share with us so that we can get them what it is they're truly looking for, which is how they want to feel in their genes. Um, going forward, the next 10 years, wow, uh, may, maybe another location nice. um, in a different town. Um, we're really working on our website to try to, to dive into the online world knowing that like the flagship store is always going to be the one, you know, mm -hmm. but but you can continue to watch us grow and, and also see more of the same. Like we've, I think we've kind of figured it out, you know? I love it, I love it. You're basically saying 10 years, we've got the kinks out, yep. we've hit our stride, we're gonna continue scaling our stride. Um, sizzle reel that, I think your store would crush it in Richmond. Like I think it would have even more success in Richmond than Charlottesville yeah. because of like the mass market and the more customer and like if you had it in like um and there's a denim store i think in shaco bottom oh really yeah um and and they do well um shaco slip or shaco bottom i think it's shaco bottom okay. i think gene theory in like a carry town or like um a shaco bottom or slip or a jackson ward okay in richmond would effing crush it well, I'm going tomorrow. Get so, out to look at spots. So, well, to kind of like get, get a feel, get a better feel. I've okay. been, I've been to Richmond a few times, but not necessarily like actively looking um, for a potential JTRVA there. But um, JTRVA, JTRVA, I love the acronym, the initials right there. I love that. Um, yeah, so you know that it's it's been a thought for a little a little while. Why Richmond? Is so, it just because you see all the people to walk by the the amount of customers? We actually have people come from Richmond really? to shop with us, um, or customers who have moved to Richmond who say, we really need you out here. Um, so, I mean, it's, Richmond's great. It's an hour away. It's so great. Uh, I, I do feel like that would be the next, the next move. And you could manage it because it's so close. We could share employee. We could share staff. Like, right. I don't know. Maddie. Maddie's on board. Maddie's on board? Maddie's on board. Maddie's watching right now. Maddie, mad props to you, Maddie. Uh, Neil Williamson, thank you for joining us. Ashley Journey, thank you for joining us. You're getting some more props from Heather. Um, Heather says you could walk into Gene Theory and be handed your perfect pair of jeans. It's an art that Laura has perfected. Um, so props on that. Um, guys, the show in totality will be archived on ilovesebill.com. Um, I thought you crushed it. I'm going to give you some props there. Thanks. Seriously. Um, we close the program the same way every single time. And how we close the show is by encouraging everybody that's watching to embody the golden rule. And I don't make it about religion. I do make it about treating others how you want to be treated yourself. 
treat other people how you want to be treated yourself, and watch the amazing positive impact it will have on the community in totality. Let someone go ahead of you in a red light. Um, smile to somebody when you walk by the street. Open the door. Just ask somebody how they're doing that day. Be nice to people. And if you do that, I think it's going to just not only make you feel better as a person, because I'm a big believer of energy and the energy that we create and the energy we share with other people. So it's the golden rule is how we close the show. Uh, for Laura Van Camp, for Harris Tolbert, Judah Wickhauer, Lauren and the team upstairs, it is the I Love Seville show. It airs Monday through Friday, 1230 to 130 on the I Love Seville network. We will see you tomorrow, guys. Have a good afternoon. So oh my gosh, you thank so you good. so much. Uh, did you have fun? I did, I had fun. I feel like it's one of those, I've never done anything like this in my life, so it's one of those, oh, I get what this is about now. Let's, let's do it for real now. You, you know? crushed it. Did I really? Yeah, you crushed okay. it. I love when you were talking about like in year one, like the journey, and I could totally relate, and I feel like it made you so like uh, human. Like so I feel like I've 